less than 2,000. The podcast. All day, all night, you feel my heat. Feel, 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 feel my heat. I, I think we should do that again. Feel, 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 feel my heat. Yeah, that's really good. I think we well, nailed that one. Feel my heat. Not only feel my heat were they singing, but remember the other song they sing? You got the touch. You got the power. Okay. You know where that came from? Where? The Transformers movie. No. Not kidding you, man. The Are actual you serious? Transformers uh you know, animated cartoon movie from, from the 86, I think that was where that song came from. <laughs> no way. I had no idea. I've seen, I've seen Boogie Nights a, a dozen times, had no clue of that. You just don't have the, the crazy esoteric knowledge of the eighties and nineties like I do, or basically you've got way more of a life than I do. So Boogie Nights, w- w- when you say one of the best movies of the nineties, uh, absolutely. One of the things that I really liked about that film is that you, the first half of the movie, you're like, oh man, I want to be a porn star. And then the whole second half of the movie, you're like, I take it back. I don't want to be a porn star. <laughs> like, I mean, that, that movie is just, it, it, it tells the story beautifully. The cinematography in it is incredible with those long, beautiful shots mm-hmm. and following people and coming in and out of worlds. Mm. I mean, cinematically alone, it's one of the best movies of the 90s. But even just the storytelling aspect of it, it's so cool and also very spot on to what, to what that industry was starting in the 70s and then moving into the 80s. This film is art. And and I think a lot of, we talked about this on the Marky Mark in the Funky Bunch episode. I think a lot of people sell this movie short and don't really give it a chance because of the subject matter. All they need to know is porn. They hear the word porn and they completely shut down and they don't go any further than that. Uh, Mm -hmm. This movie only made 40 something million dollars. It had a budget of 15 million. It made 40 something million internationally. So this oh, was wow. this was an even smaller movie than Fight Club. And and but it is one of the most well-made films certainly of the decade and, and perhaps of all time. Paul Thomas Anderson is a genius. He this you could see how much of himself he put into this. First of all, he wrote a, a short story, a, a mockumentary short film, The Dirk Diggler Story, in 1988. And then he expanded it to, uh, nine years later to 1997's Boogie Nights. And, and the only other film of the era that I can compare it to cinem- uh, in terms of cinematography and the blocking of scenes is probably Goodfellas. Yeah. The, good, the Goodfellas shot. Everybody knows the Goodfellas shot. There were multiple Goodfellas shots in this, including scenes coming in throughout the house, going outside, and then, you know, somebody jumps into the water, the camera follows them into the water, and then continues to shoot coming back up. It's an incredible And then even scene. the music, and then even the music yeah. and that gets muted like you're underwater, yes. and then you come back out, and it, it it's awesome. Tell me in terms of, as a film person, in terms of setting up a shot like that, a continuous shot coming from the front door in through a building into the outside into water and back up like the lighting aspects of that getting the extras all in the right places i how long would it take to a whole week probably to get that one shot yeah, but you know on a budget of 15 million you don't have a week mm-hmm. i mean so this is one of those things to where they had been mentally preparing for that shot for a very long time mm. i mean just to get the camera settings alone to get the right exposure and all that kind of stuff going from interior to exterior that stuff's tough i mean it's easier to do today than it used to be but but remember this was shot on 35 millimeter film there was so much more of this stuff that was done in camera that now you can do in post. Right. So to nail these types of shots, I mean, it it, it takes a very skilled cinematographer and director to to uh, you know to really nail those. And then of course you have to wait to get it back and hope you did it right. <laughs> Man, you mentioned like most people hear porn and then they they're they're thrown off by it. I've seen this movie so many times, I don't ever really ever stop and think, oh, it's 
got the porn industry in it because I just I just know the movie so well. But I'm telling you, man, you forget how dirty that movie really is <laughs> until you're watching it on your back porch on your TV and your and and that first sex scene comes in and all of a sudden I'm looking around at my neighbor's windows going I, for, I, I hope nobody's watching me watch this movie. I was re, I was watching it with my wife outside mm -hmm. on the porch in the hot tub. Where ever not in the hot tub, but everybody could hear. I mean, everybody and every neighbor could hear my TV. I, I very quickly went. I should probably finish Boogie Nights inside. <laughs> First of all, major lost opportunity not watching it in the hot tub on on the deck outside. I mean, you should have been smoking the little cigarillos like. Burt Reynolds, you know, <laughs> like gray chest hair and just like, I mean, yeah. I, got the, I got the, I mean, I got the body of his right now <laughs> to, to people who, who get hung up on, on the fact that it's porn and they don't go any further than that. You could pretty much replace porn with any industry here. I mean, I think it's something like, I of course haven't seen it, but like black Swan, I mean, this could mm -hmm. be about ballerinas. This could be about the music industry. This could be about acting, regular acting. It could be about really any sort of uh, rags to riches 70s period piece, 70s, 80s period piece. And it didn't have to be about porn. It just happened to be about porn. And, and then they really went there with it. I mean, and by really went there, they really went there. Yeah. Th this whole cast is incredible. I want to go down the list of some of these people. Marky Mark. I, I mean, this cast is incredible. Mar no, 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 Marky no, Mark. no. We agreed that when it came to his acting, we would go by Mark. No, 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 no. You agreed that. I said, no matter what, F you, you're still Marky Mark. No matter how accomplished of an actor you are, you can go with Mark Wahlberg. How about this? Marky Mark Wahlberg. Will you accept that? Even if you're not, I'm going ahead. <laughs> I, mean, I, I mean, I don't want to, but you don't have to I say will. It. Marky Mark Wahlberg, this was his best role, bar none. His acting was incredible. The way he starts as this naive, uh, big-eyed, uh, innocent boy, and mm -hmm. and 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 then and is just so sweet and 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 in over his head and starstruck, and then his transition into an egomaniac, uh, to a to and then to a and and, and then to a, a drug-addled junkie uh, wash-up is is such an incredible transformation. Uh, of character his performance was riveting and, and this is what just totally launched him into the next stratosphere of his of his acting career and and what's also great is not only was mark Wahlberg then so good in it he he was surrounded by the most incredible cast unbelievable i mean you've got burt reynolds who i mean he was amazing in he was film. made to play that role he, he's, he, was. he was perfect again because he was a big star in the 70s and 80s, had tons of personal problems, went through the Marla Maples uh, public divorce and, and, and lost his ass in that divorce, may have had mm -hmm. to file bankruptcy. And this was like part of his comeback. And this was like right up his alley, like 70s. Oh, yeah. He's got that perfect silver hair. He looks so cool with the beard and the cigarillo and just, just <laughs> he orders a seven up. I, I mean, how he's like, he's just like so cool. He can just order a seven up. I don't think he drinks in the whole movie. No, I don't think he does. He, he, he provides the party for everybody else. And he's a filmmaker. And he's, the, and he's a filmmaker. He, he's, he's legitimately interested in making film. He, he's, he's, he hates when they start going to tape. He, he, he's fighting against that. He says, I am a filmmaker. That's why I will never make a movie on tape. These are stars. He was a filmmaker, and, and his whole life's goal was to make something beyond just sex on film. And he started making mm -hmm. it with the Brock Landers series, which Dirk Diggler yep. gives, him, gives him the idea for. And, and I love the scene when he's sitting there putting it to the final touches on it, and he's just like, this is the best thing we've ever done. And his editor's like, it's a real film, Jack. This <laughs> is what the, I want them to remember me by. That was like the high watermark of that guy's life. And that was that's what's cool about this is even even the other characters they're, they're they all have their own story arc. They do. Julianne you know, Moore, I mean, his wife, Amber Wade. Julianne Moore, yeah, tremendous. And then you got Heather Heather Graham, William H Macy, Philip John Seymour C. Hoffman, Riley, dude. Philip Seymour Hoffman. Like his I, his his role in his uh, talk about range. When I later saw Philip Seymour Hoffman about what ten years after this 
or or so become like an Academy Award winning actor for the Capote stuff and other things yep. he had done. And that he kind of, I, I think this was one of his early, earlier roles, the long hair, the, the in the closet. <laughs> Um, well, that's what's. I mean, that was what's weird. Like, whenever I saw him like becoming prestigious in his in his later work, all I could see him is the is the guy with the long hair, overweight, and his wife beater, sucking on a pen, going, "You look really good." <laughs> you know, to, <laughs> he look, look really sexy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Top to bottom, everyone in this film, you believed who they were. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. But 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 what made it easier to do that with was the fact that none of the characters knew who they were. If you notice, every everyone in the movie is struggling to find their identity. Yeah. Every character, even Burt Reynolds, figuring his stuff out. How does he want to be remembered by? He's aging. He's getting up there. Uh, I mean, William H. Macy. Wow is really the only one note character of the whole movie. You're right. And he plays that one note so well. You feel so sorry for the poor guy. <laughs> his his wife is cheating on him at least three separate times in this film. And one of them's like with a crowd around at, at a party. And he's, and then the cinematographer is trying yeah. to talk to him. <laughs> and he goes, my, my, my wife's got an and I'm not, my mind. Sorry if my mind isn't on the movie of the film we're shooting tomorrow. Exactly. And well, I've geez, always wondered, sorry, Jack. I've course. always wondered, was that scripted or was that a happy accident? And they just left it in because it was such a great uh, Freudian slip. Yeah, I, I don't know. I, it, these are that's the thing. This movie was so brilliantly written, directed, performed. I, I wouldn't be surprised either which way. I, I wouldn't be surprised if that whole scene with the you know, with the margaritas was scripted. Mm -hmm. Well, I wouldn't be surprised if it was improv either. I mean, that's the thing because the, you, you put together an ensemble of some of the best, most talented actors with a great director and a great script and, and just the magic happened. And that's what you get when you put a great group of people together. It's a real film. It's a real film, Chad. I wonder if Paul Thomas Anderson was sitting there in the cutting room putting this movie together like, I want them to remember me by this. And he's done some absolutely amazing films, you know, uh, uh, Life Aquatic, of course. There Will Be Blood. He has done incredible films. This one is his best. Magnolia, another uh, ensemble uh, piece with a lot of these same actors from Boogie Nights. Mm -hmm. uh, but, but this, to me was the film to remember him by uh, it, it was it has just so much heart none of it seems like it's actors reading lines no it it, it all seems like it's just off the cuff naturalistic uh and 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 the period piece quality of this is so good the music the sets the costumes uh, all of it just fits the only piece of continuity that that was raw was was off was was you got the touch you got the power that was in transformers wasn't written until 1987 unless the idea is dirk diggler wrote that song uh i think it's the idea dirk diggler wrote that song because in the film that would have been 83 84 uh when that scene happened when they were singing it but, but look like don Cheadle, amazing is that where he got to start in this film too don che just oh yeah don Cheadle, another yeah. academy award winning actor is just just a kind of a bit part almost, but it's got a lot of heart to it. And he's like the most grounded. He, he, he you know, uh, just kind of wants he's to be a normal most, guy. He's the most grounded, but, he, but I mean, he's still struggling to find his identity. Absolutely. He's wearing the cowboy outfit. He's yeah. Then he goes on to the know. Rick James look. And the last thing to say about the cast, everyone lo loves Heather Graham as roller girl. Everyone. Now right. this got her start. <laughs> Holy cow. Did it ever. And she was so brave. She almost didn't get the role. PTA didn't uh, even bother. He wanted her, but didn't even bother uh, trying to cast her because he didn't think she would do nudity. And then really? their agents contacted uh, him and said, oh, she'll do it. And, and boy, that launched her. And it's it's just, she's so perfectly, she looks the part, sounds the part. And it's just such an iconic character. I mean, I remember, I know people who still dress up as Roller Girl for Halloween and stuff. She was... Born to play that part. Heather Graham, I see, is acting in other movies. Mm -hmm. She is Roller Girl in this movie. Yes. <laughs> Good point. <laughs> Do you know Paul Thomas Anderson's first choice for Dirk Diggler was Leonardo DiCaprio? No. 
he, really? He loved him from from Basketball Diaries, which is another okay. movie with Mark Wahlberg, and, and another movie about you know getting popular and then you know fall, your life falling apart due to drugs. And and yep. Leo would probably do a good job and everything, but Mark we Marky Mark nailed it, absolutely nailed it, and and, and Leo decided to do Titanic instead. So probably the right choices all the way around for for both. Yes, I, I mean it's one of those things that I think the right the right thing in the universe happened by Leo going to Titanic and Mark Wahlberg doing this movie. Leonardo DiCaprio would have would have still brought that energy to it because he can he he is such an amazing actor. He could have become Dirk Diggler, but I just I can't picture the movie without. Mark Wahlberg in it. The music is just iconic. The 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 person who put together the the not not the original score. I don't even know if there is much of an original score to this. But the the the, the soundtrack with the old seventies and eighties music is, is brilliant. You know, it's got those great songs like Three Dog Night, Mama Told Me Not to Come, uh, Spill the Wine by War. Uh, Jesse's Girl and Sister Christian, you cannot hear those songs without thinking of the creepy scene with the guy, you know, coked out of his mind with the little Asian boy throwing firecrackers around and, and like just creepy AF. And those two songs, I, I can only associate with that scene. Now tell me this, that one scene when he's throwing, when they're throwing the firecrackers and they're going to rob the guy. Yes. That's the only scene in the whole movie that I felt like I was watching a different movie. It was weird, wasn't it? It was so off-putting, but I think that was done on purpose now that I'm actually thinking about it. But it feels like you're in a whole different movie. Mm -hmm. Like that scene is just placed in there. To me, you could have gotten rid of it. As as I remember it, I this is just off my memory. I, I think I heard somewhere that Paul Thomas Anderson said that that scene was hell. Like that, like literally was supposed to be, not literally, figuratively, that scene was supposed to be hell. So if it feels different, and I always wondered why they zoom in and stay on a shot of Marky Mark just sweating there and like worried because he's, you know, they're going to steal from the guy. They're coked out of their mind. There's guns everywhere. And, and, and they just focus in on his stressed out face to Jesse's girl. And I think this is like, this is hell. This is, and then they put on Sister Christian. I mean, literally, this is 80s hell. <laughs> People doing blow and, and all this stuff. So I think it was intentionally meant to, to feel like you fell into a different portal or a different movie because that was the moment. Like, he died and is in hell and well, will be redeemed. He succeeded. Yeah, I mean, he, he succeeded then because, I mean, it, it felt different. I mean, it was... It was off-putting. I like how the end of the but movie... But then, of course... Oh, but then, and then... Oh, sorry. Then, but then, but then, then you can't... Everything has to come full circle. Now, all of a sudden, he's back, and he's back yep. in his industry, yep. and then, you know, you know, he's doing giving him, himself the pep talk in the room before that famous clip of him pulling out what is not really his... <laughs> What's interesting is how it's sort of like you become trapped in that industry. Ah, but but the movie shows you through the ensemble cast that you don't have to be. Different people respond differently. Don Cheadle sure. and his wife open the store. They have a kid. They, they like retire and become everyday kind of middle Americans. Mm -hmm. You know, some of them go back to it. Oh, Roller Girl gets her GED. Yeah, she's probably going to stay in that lifestyle, but at least she got back and did overcame high school which was a big part of her character that she was stressed about julianne moore i don't think ever got her kid back but that's not the point certain people such as jack and amber and dirk are lifers they are going to be doing that for life and and the happy ending is them getting back together because remember that's a family dirk never had a, a real connection with his family his dad is jack his sister if you want to think of it that way is roller girl and and, and <laughs> amber waves <laughs> His mom, Julianne yeah. Moore, his mom, it's creepy. And he sleeps with his mom in his very yeah. first scene. And she calls him his little boy and says, you're the best thing that's happened to me since I lost my son. I mean, she is so creepy, that character. When you really break down what's being stated in the film, there's a lot of creepy stuff in Boogie Nights. Yeah. It's, it's just, just clouded in this whole fun world for the first half. <laughs> John C. Riley goes to do magic. He's doing magic at a strip club, though. So he's kind of like integrating the two parts of, of 
so so not everybody is just you're trapped in it. Some people move on and do better. And, fair enough. And some, yeah, fair enough. I, I stand corrected. You're right. I was kind of fixated on 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 Wahlberg's character. Okay, you mentioned the final shot where he busts it out at the very end and you get to see what has been sort of the subject. You've been seeing other people's reaction to it all movie and you finally get to see it right there in living color and it's just 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 the package. You don't see his head or anything. It's just like directly into the mirror. Mm -hmm. I will never forget when we were in our early 20s, I was over at your house hanging out and your mom said, Chad, I can't believe you made me and dad watch Boogie Nights. <laughs> and you made Mr. and Mrs. Bishop. You recommended that movie to them. And I'm like, oh my God, Chad, you told them to watch this movie? And you turn to me and you're like, what, man? It's a great movie. You like it. You say it's a great movie too. I'm like, yes, it's a great movie. <laughs> but to tell your church, your very sober church going middle American white picket fences, suburbanite mother and father to watch that movie. And I just can't believe I'm like, did you make it to the end? They're like, yes, we watched every minute of it. And I'm just thinking, Oh, Mrs. Bischoff saw that final shot. And yeah, the- in hindsight, <laughs> it was probably not the right thing to recommend. <laughs> So as much as we've been gushing they about didn't this like movie, it. as much as much as we've been gushing about this movie, one of the best movies of the '90s and perhaps one of the best of all time, it may not be something you recommend to your parents or watch with your parents. Yeah, you know, like obviously everybody by now knows my wife doesn't listen to this show. My parents listen to every single episode. I wouldn't be surprised if they're so scarred that they skip this episode. This might be the one they don't listen to. They're lost. 